so it looks like Joe Mama Biden is going to be inaugurated president in about a week. Okay. Am I worried? Sure. Same way I same way I always would be when I know that tough yet survivable times are coming. <clears throat> I don't think it's going to be as damaging as some people think it might be, or even as bad as I thought it uh, would be initially. I've actually toned down a lot on just, you know, how much fear I have for the whole thing. Because here's the thing, guys. I mean, we survived eight years of Barack Obama. Worst president in U.S. history. I don't think that four years of, of Joe Mama, or more accurately, four years of Chlamydia Harris, is really going to do that much damage, honestly. Like, it's going to make things tougher, of course. I've done some deep digging for one thing, anything, that Biden's platform said that I can even come to terms with, let alone agree with, haven't been able to do it. I've mentioned plenty of times in videos that there are plenty of things I can come up with that Donald Trump did that I disagree with. I have yet to see one thing that Joe Mama and Chlamydia Harris want to do that I can even accept or tolerate, let alone agree with, but who knows. But see, here's the thing. <clears throat> when it looked like Joe Biden was possibly going to win, I told myself, well, you know, it's fine because the Republicans are going to keep their Senate majority and they're just going to block all the shenanigans that Joe Mama wants to do. Just like how Obama could only get like half of the horribly, awfully destructive things he wanted to do to this country done because of the, the Senate back then. Hmm. And the House, well, I thought, well, you know, Joe Mama's going to be blocked on a lot of things he wants to do. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like things are actually worse than I had initially thought. See, I initially thought things weren't, wouldn't be that bad. Then I thought things were going to be terrible and that, you know, the end of the world is coming. Now I'm somewhere in the middle. <laughs> because the fact of the matter is the Republican Party has finally dealt itself its own death blow. The Republican Party has gone for the kill shot on itself. The Republican Party has fully committed Sudoku, okay? Multiple Republican representatives voting to impeach Trump a second time for charges that are even more false than the first false time around. The first false phony impeachment around, we didn't have, like, direct evidence that it was false, right? There was no evidence that it was ever true, and that's why the, uh, the conviction didn't go through. But, uh, we didn't have direct evidence that it was false. See, this time we do. Because the articles of impeachment in this case refer to Donald Trump having incited the riot on at Capitol Hill on January 6th, when in reality it is proven, provably apparent via evidence, that Donald Trump literally did the exact opposite of that. <clears throat> but whatever, it's not going to stop the... Uh, it's not going to stop the establishment from doing their establishment things. <sighs> no, the point is that the Republican Party has just cracked itself in half. Just, just straight split itself. Because you've got so many people who voted various Republicans in in 2016. Um because Donald Trump was there and they were voting for Trump, right? In 2018, that's when the Democrats got their big swing back in the House because Trump wasn't on the ticket. Then in 2020, once again, lots of Republicans made their way, uh, well, not tons, but multiple Republicans made their way into House and Senate seats because Donald Trump was on the Republican ticket with them. 
I I would have voted straight party, honestly, if it weren't for the fact that I live in Indiana and the Republican candidate was Eric Holcomb, a.k.a. the biggest rhino to ever walk the earth, but I digress. So the Republican Party doesn't understand the common people, right? See... The same can be true, the same can be said to an extent with the Democrats and the left and the far left, the liberals, whatever you want to call it, that whole side of things. And honestly, guys, no, 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 no. Don't give me any of that bull shit about how, oh, the sides are just made up in your head. Oh, the sides only exist because you think they do. Oh, if we could just put all this, this side, my side versus that tribe, all the tribalism aside. No, 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 guys, you're not getting it. You're not fucking getting it, okay? I can sit here and tell myself that, well... I'm just being too tribalistic and I need to open my mind and and go beyond the labels and everything like, you know, all of m- m- enlightened centrists do. That's not going to change the fact that like thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, if not potentially millions of people in this country want me dead because of who I voted for in an open election. And I'm going to give you guys a little uh, a little uh, little truth bomb here. Sure, my side may have people like that too. Um but I think we have a hell of a lot less of it. At least visibly. The people on our si- on my side that are like that are the kind of people who, you know, don't have internet. And they live off of off of fishing rivers and berry trees and, and nature. Okay? The people on the other side, for the people who are on the opposing side to me, will go on open tech platforms and openly discuss how they want people like me dead or put in concentration camps and be applauded for it by the owners of those same platforms. So tell me again how it's my fault for being tribalistic. No, 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 no. No, you guys don't get it. But, uh, uh, tangent aside. So, when when it comes to the Democrats, there are a lot of them, the, the left, when it comes to the left, there are a lot of them that just don't understand the common people. But a lot of them do. And the problem is a lot more Democrats understand the common people than Republicans do. The problem is Democrats, leftists, my left, I'm not talking, okay, and d- d- disclaimer, hashtag not all Democrats, I'm not talking about your ma- moderate Democrats like Matulsi Gabbard, okay, I'm talking about the Democrat party has been inundated by the far left, okay, this is something that even a lot of ma- enlightened centrists agree on. So... <clears throat> when I'm talking about the leftist Democrats, the ones who do understand the common people hate them. The Republicans who understand the common people like the common people. Okay? So here's the thing, though. Most Democrats, I think, in, in, in power, in Congress, in state Congresses, in governorships, most of the Democrats who do understand the common... Most of the Democrats in power understand the common people and hate them. A minority of them just don't understand the common people at all. The majority of Republicans in power don't understand the common people, and a minority of them understand them and love them. So, what you end up with is all kinds of Republican senators and congressmen talking about how uh, they are, you know, so disappointed with Trump's incitement of the riot and the actions on Capitol Hill, which again... I stand by most of what took place on Capitol Hill. I personally endorse a majority of what took place on Capitol Hill, okay? Everything people did there that did not result in the death of a person, fully endorsed by me, okay? Because again, if nothing else, even if it was illegal, even if it was 
morally wrong in the moment, even if it was a tactical error. It taught these elites that they are not invincible. The absolute horror that would go through the through the through the head of someone like Nancy Pelosi or Chuck Schumer or Bitch McConnell when they realize someone was sitting in my chair, someone touched my gavel. Honestly, to me, that made it all worth it. Except the deaths. Except the deaths. I'll give you that. I'll give you that one, guys. But everything there that did not directly result in a person's death is fully endorsed by me. So. But Republicans, right? They don't understand the people, for the most part. So they think, they think that by being these turncoats, by turning on Trump, by turning on populism itself, by playing along with the establishment, they think they're going to strengthen themselves. And I think they're wrong. I hope they're wrong. Because, see, the last thing I would ever want to see is for 2022 to roll around and any of these turncoat, Benedict, Benedict Arnold-ass traitorous motherfuckers with an R next to their name getting reelected. Because at this point, they're all rhinos. They're no different. In fact, it's not even like, they're, they're not even rhinos anymore. Just Republican has become part of the establishment. Or it always was, and now it's just more overt than ever. But I think, and I hope, that in 2022, all of these Republicans who turned coat, who turned traitor, who said, I'm going to vote for Donald Trump's impeachment, and I'm going to confirm it in the Senate if it goes to the Senate, all these people who said, well, I can't remember the guy's name, I had it on the tip of my tongue earlier, it was the guy who released a statement that said, I was going to object to the electoral college votes, but after the events of the 6th, I can no longer in good conscience, blah, blah, blah. No, he could no longer in good conscience uh, not object to the votes after what happened because what happened was the result of people being so upset at the system that they finally snapped because Trump's base has always been pretty peaceful, right? Like Trump's base has... People didn't think this was going to happen because nothing like it had ever happened from the right. Anytime a, a riot happens or a city gets burned, it's always Antifa, it's always BLM, burn, loot, murder. It's always those people burning entire cities to the ground, you know? Never once did, did, did you know, like uh, Atlanta or Portland or, or never once did a city in like a Trump base, like n never once in like, you know in like Fort Worth, Texas or anywhere or or Dallas, Texas. Never once did any of those cities get burnt to the ground by people waving Trump flags. No, no, no. That never happened. So nobody expected this. But see, they should have because you can only push people so far before they snap. So the Republican Party is pretty much done. Okay. In 2022, one of two things, well, technically one of three things is going to happen, but the first one I really don't see happening. The first possibility, technically a possibility, but I really don't see it happening, is that all these turncoat Republicans, like the representative, again, I'm blanking on his name, from Ohio, who, um, who released a statement uh, calling for Trump's impeachment, you know, people like that get reelected. I don't see it happening. I don't see it happening. The second possibility is that in 2022, third party people just sweep through, knocking half the Republican Party, maybe even more, right out of the Capitol. Not physically, but I mean, you know, just sweep through, sweeping wins for third parties. Libertarian, um, you know, maybe a new Trump party gets formed by then, I don't know, just the populist party, whatever. Just some third party just sweeps in and takes 50% or more of the Republican seats. That would be pretty nice, because establishing that big of a third party foothold in the Capitol would be insanely nice. The 
the third possibility, and the one that I see being most likely, is that the votes that would have just gone to these turncoat establishment Republicans get split 50-50, and as a result, Democrats just sweep through and we get a just full blue capital. Like, very little red to be seen anywhere. Maybe, like, Ted Cruz, Josh Hawley, um, Rand Paul are, like, the only Republicans in Congress total when 2022 rolls around. Well, I guess, no, because only a third of the... Only a third of the Senate is up for grabs at any one point. But you know what I mean. Like, just every Republican who's up for grabs, whose seat is up for grabs in 2022, just all blue. Just all blue. And we just get blue capital. Blue, D.C. is blue in the Capitol building. President's blue. House is blue. Senate's blue. Super majorities in all three. Well, obviously the presidency would be, but you know what I mean. Super majority blue House. Super majority blue Senate. Democrat president. Just the whole shebang. The whole kit and or caboodle. Well, that certainly would be the most disastrous outcome. It's the one that I personally think is most likely. Well, I guess not really. The most disastrous outcome would be the first one I mentioned, which is where all these turncoat establishment Republicans keep their seats. That is actually the most dangerous and disastrous. Because if my prediction comes true, and all of these, every single Republican up for re-election in 2022, with the exception of the true red ones, like Ted Cruz, Josh Hawley, uh, Rand Paul, and a couple others, ev- uh, if they are, but like every single establishment Republican up for re-election in 2022, all of their seats go blue. Yes, on the one hand, that would make life in America much harder, as it always does when anything in Washington, D.C. goes blue. But on the other hand, it would be the wake-up call we need. And that is why the establishment Republicans all getting re-elected is the worst possibility. Because then we would just keep sitting here in these, in this simmering water that's inching its way toward boiling. But if we just... If we just pick everybody up and we drop them into a boiling hot vat of oil right off the bat right out of the gate blue everywhere blue house blue senate blue presidency super majority in the senate senate bl- democrats in the senate get to do whatever they want for two years joe biden can put forty-five thousand judges in the supreme court And the Senate just confirms all of them. At the very least, that would be the wake-up call that we finally need to actually get something done. Peacefully, non-violently, without secession or civil war. Perfect. Perfect. Let's get it done, guys. Now, of course, the, 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 um, the one that I would like to see the most is, again, that big third party sweep where all the Republicans up for re-election in 2022 get their seats taken by, like, some yellow or orange or gray or purple seats or whatever, you know? Um, you know, maybe we form the Jeb Bush party, the Guac, the Guac Bowl party, and they take all the Republican seats. That's the one I would like to see the most. But the most likely one, in my opinion, is that we end up with a uh, Capitol Hill that is just blue as far as the eyes can see. And yes, it would spell the temporary end of freedom in the United States. But maybe, just maybe, all of the anti-war, anti-secession, anti-violence people will finally get their wish and uh, this huge populist movement just comes sweeping in. People get tired of the taxes. People get tired of businesses leaving the U.S. People get tired of everything in their lives being dictated for them by Washington, D.C. and Silicon Valley, California. And just this huge populist wave sweeps right through the Capitol. And the entire Capitol is the Jeb Bush party. Or the Ben Carson party. 
or the Trump party. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. I'm still not hopeful. Well, I should say I'm still not expecting a peaceful, legal solution to freedom existing in the United States 20 years from now. Um, I wouldn't bet money on it, okay? I wouldn't bet gold on it. I wouldn't bet bitcoins on it. I don't think it's going to happen. But from reading up on my history and listening to some cooler heads, I am more open to the possibility than I was before when I uploaded the video called Cope. So, I still don't think that freedom will exist in this country in 2040 without secession and without violence. I honestly still don't think it will happen. I don't think peace will exist in this country in 2040 without secession and or civil war and or some kind of violence. I, do, I still don't think that there is a peaceful legal solution to freedom existing in 2040 in the U.S. But I am starting to be swayed more toward the idea that it might happen in real life. So I remain hopeful for it. More hopeful than I was before, certainly. Well, equally as hopeful, but more optimistic. Not optimistic enough to think it's going to happen, but optimistic enough to say, well, anything's possible, I suppose. Let's just hope for it and try our best to make it happen. The odds are against it, in my opinion, but we can still try our best to make it happen. This video ended up being about mm, four and a half times longer than I was anticipating, but, you know, tends to happen when you just speak your mind off the cuff, I suppose. Well, <clears throat> this is North Sea Hero. I'll be seeing you all later, and I'm signing out.